Today, we are joined by a guy who could have been running around for Australia in the Olympics if he went down a different pathway, but a slight indoors moment in his life happened nearly 10 years ago when he had a meeting with the Geelong Football Club. Mark Goodsabs, welcome to the podcast. Daniel Menzel, thank you for having me. So, Blitz, how accurate is that statement? How did you go from athletics and um, near the, nearly the Olympics and then to the Geelong Footy Club? Yeah, it was about 10 years ago or so. I was pretty keen on my athletics. Um, 2011 was uh, probably sort of a bigger year for me, um, but it was Cam Guthrie's first year at the Geelong Football Club. So um, I was taking athletics pretty seriously. I went to school with the Guthries. We're family friends. Um, and Andrew always su- sort of suggested uh, that I try and come across to footy throughout my whole, whole running career because he he uh, coached me in under 11s, saw maybe a little bit in me, but I was also quite tall. Um, and I wasn't really having a bar of it, didn't really want to do anything like that and focus on my running. And then finally he convinced me to – he convinced Wellesie to come speak to me and convinced me to come speak to Wellesie. So uh, I think it was 2011 – Roughly October, you guys would have been in your off-season, just won the flag off somewhere. I'm not sure where everyone was, but no one was at the club. And I, I went there and had a meeting, um, did a little bit of a trial and uh, was really impressed with the facilities and the place and how everyone went about their business there. Um, and shortly after that, spoke to my parents and I was offered a Category B contract um, and I took it, but on the proviso that I could continue with my running and um, try and give the 2012 Olympics a crack. Um, and they were fantastic. They let me do that. Uh, it happened, didn't happen the way I wanted it to. I didn't make the Olympics. But um, I think I started at the club, started July, got dropped for the VFL flag, and the VFL boys won the flag in 2012. But, um, yeah, very happy. I decided once I was going to go to football, there would be no regrets um, leaving athletics. And um, once I did that, I was, um, yeah, I suppose I haven't looked back. I've enjoyed every moment. Good. So just while we're on athletics and the Olympics, what was your event and what was your times and how close did you obviously come to making those Olympics? Yeah, I was probably seven seconds off in the 1500 metres. That was my favourite event. I ran anywhere from 15 and 3K. Uh, I suppose in football terms, 3K is a bit of a time trial so you can understand uh, the speed and how, how quick you're going. But 1500 was my favourite event. I ended up running 343, but... 3.37 was the qualifier, so or 3.36 and a half. So it was about six, uh, six and a half seconds I missed out on, which in a three and a half minute race, it's 50 metres, so it's quite a bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, and so, I was running eight minutes 15 for the 3K, um, which um, I was happy with then, and now they would, they would absolutely smash me now. I've uh, lost a bit of that fitness, men. Eight, eight minutes 15 for the 3K, that beat some of our 2K time trial last night, I have no doubt. Um, so growing up, what sport did you play? Was it just was it just athletics? Uh, I was very fortunate. I grew up with my brother Chris and his sister Sarah, who were all into basketball, a bit of footy, cricket, indoor cricket, um, tennis. Probably much like yourself, played everything and um, loved everything at school sports and out of school. So the main ones were probably basketball and athletics. Uh, I played that right through to about sixteen, and then. Uh, Dad said, sort of put it on me a bit to say, if you want to take a sport seriously at 16, now is probably the age you want to start um, looking at that pathway. And um, so I left basketball behind and, and just went with athletics. Um, but I'd, I'd always follow footy and obviously having an older brother than Chris, we'd always kick the footy and go down the park. So um, it's not like I've come to football not knowing the rules or anything. I was a Carlton fan at the time and, um, yeah, I did enjoy footy. It's just something I'd didn't get into it until later. Yeah, okay. So you mentioned it there. You come from a sporting background. Both your parents represent Australia in basketball and brother, obviously, Chris plays basketball and Sarah has played for Australia in basketball. Did you think about basketball for yourself, seeing as it's, it's basically ingrained in the family? Yeah, I did. I think um, the way it's worked out has been really good, but I think initially Dad wanted me to stick with basketball and um, – put athletics to the side. I, I went the other way. But, yeah, as you mentioned, so Dad went to the 76 Montreal Olympics. Mum went to the 84 Los Angeles. And then Sarah was going to go to the uh, the Tokyo ones this year. But with everything that's gone on, that hasn't been the case. So um, she'll have to work hard and 
try again next year. But yeah, basketball was obviously something that um, is being ingrained in my family for a long time, and I still follow it all. Obviously, uh, watch Sarah play at the at the highest level now, and um, look, you only get one life, so I can't do it all. Uh, in another lifetime, I'd, I'd love to be starting small forward for an NBA team, but <laughs> not to be. I think there's a few in that boat that certainly would love that. And so now that we touch on the AFL, you come into the system and I guess time trials in AFL or at any level, most players dread them. Do you actually, do you love them? Um, do I love them? I love the feeling of winning and the feeling of finishing them. But I um, win. Winning- well, I don't know if you've ever been beaten that I've ever seen. So that feeling's always yeah. there. Uh, no, I'm always still nervous, though, because everyone expects you to win. So as soon as you don't, everyone's like, oh, what's happened? He hasn't done well. Right. But um, no, you still feel the pressure. And they're still tough, um, even though I've come from running background. But um, yeah, that was, my, that was my very first session I did with the club. Rocked up at the Landy Field and did a little 2K with everyone. And um, yeah, it's solid. So with that then... Was that your best time and what is your best 2K time trial since you've been with Geelong? Um, a lot of people compare this and look at this and I have no doubt there's a lot of people around the country that play local level footy and go, oh, what AFL player runs the best time? And your name will come up, obviously. What was your best 2K time trial? So when I was running, um, at my peak of my running powers, I was running about 5.15 for a 2K up. Um, but I was 86 kilos. So now I'm about 102. Yeah. Um, when I first got to the club, around about 5:41, I'd probably run around 5:50 now. So, at 102 kilos, I, it's not too bad. It's, a, it's yeah, okay. <laughs> not too bad is definitely understating it. But um, so okay. So then the other question I got with that is, I've obviously been on an off season with you. I've been in America, and if you just say, for example, you enjoyed your time over there, drunk most days, thought, you know what, I'm not going to train, absolutely nothing, going to come back day one and see what I run. What time do you think you'd run? Um, well, we pretty much did that, didn't we? <laughs> 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 when we did our US trip, we'll probably get to that. But um, with no training, look, I think I've, I've got a good base behind me. So I'm very lucky in terms of I can understand my body and the way it moves when I am running. Uh, it would, it would, I'd have to do a bit of training. It would be close to six minutes, though. That three-minute per K pace is something that um, is pretty solid, but I could probably get by. Um, I mean, I'd get by purely from the guilt, men's, if we're, if we're having a few drinks every day in the U.S. For those listening at home, I just heard you say that if you didn't do any training for it, you'd run a six-minute time trial in the 2K. That is incredible. I, I would struggle to break 70 if I – I wouldn't break 70 if I didn't do any training at all. Um, and I know a lot of people at home wouldn't break eight, nine, or ten minutes if they didn't do any training. So that's incredible. And, and so from there, we're going to move on to your career at Geelong. And you've played more than 160 games since being picked up in the 2012 rookie draft. And – You've won two card degree medals, which for those who don't know, it's a Geelong best and fairest. Um, it's fair to say you haven't missed a lot of footy and it's been a pretty successful career choice for you since joining the AFL. Yeah, I've been very fortunate, I think. I think um, when I first got to the club, I had some great people to learn from. Maxi Rook, Dale Amos, Nigel Lappin, those type of characters uh, helped me out a lot. Um, I've been very fortunate um, some good luck with injuries. I've only had a couple of injuries because of contact. Um, when I got caught up in an awkward tackle against Adelaide, I broke my leg, um, but I've had no stress-related injuries, so I've been able to play quite a bit. Um, and as you know, my first game came along because we had Hamish McIntosh, Trent West, Josh Walker, Nath Vardy, all injured, and we didn't have a Ruckman round yeah. one, so I got my first gig there. So I've been very fortunate, but, um, yeah, I've just – I've really enjoyed – my time so far um, and I think that's due to uh, just my teammates I've just enjoyed the company as you know we'd, we'd grab co- coffee and food a lot when um, when we could in the middle of training sessions or whatever it might be and um, just the company of teammates is something that I, I really enjoy. So I like that you brought up the fact that your first game was as a ruckman and so um, you played a number of positions ruckman, wing, full back You're a swingman, basically. What is your best position in your mind? Where do you feel most comfortable in the game? 
I think I think you need to be very smart footballer to play forward. There's your compliment, men's. I think you're a very smart footballer and you're able to play forward. Be successful forward. Um, I have come from an athletics background, so I don't. My weakness is probably my football mind and my football knowledge. Um, so this isn't discrediting the back line at all, but yeah. I've found it probably the easier position to play because the game's in front of you. Um, I can see everything that's happening and I'm able to read the ball a bit easier because it's not as 360. Um, does that make sense? That, does make, that makes perfect sense. What I will say with that, though, is I agree to an extent, but also the other thing um, which you've done incredibly well, and that's why you're in a leadership group now, is you ask questions and you, you're you very curious and you pick up and then you learn much quicker, whereas a lot of people, and I've learned this through coaching over the last six years, um, they sort of, and you haven't come from the background, so they sort of, they back in what they know and so you don't actually evolve or learn anymore. And so I think with that, Although you might not, it might be in front of you, you don't have to think as much, you still, you very much evolve that very quickly because of you, you've not touched on the names, Max Rook and Dale Amos and those other guys around you that you've you've used and tapped into. Yeah, and that was probably, um, Andrew Mackey's another one. I remember him in my first year uh, calling me a pest because I would just ask questions after every drill. But that was probably something I needed to do was when I first got to the club, my first season, um, the club was coming off a premiership win and we had some great players and I just needed to play catch-up. So I just tried to do as much as I could um, and learn as quick as possible to, to try and make it an even playing keel. And, um, yeah, it's it's worked out so far so good and hopefully I've got a couple more years left in me. Good. So we're going to touch on team um, success. And so you've played in obviously a very successful side, um, has played in three prelim finals but just hasn't been able to get it done to get to the, obviously, the ultimate, the grand final. So you've some, come so close, missed opportunities. How do you view that? And obviously you're hoping that this year might be a bit different, but I guess how do you view the three prelim finals and the, the closeness of the group and not quite been able to get the, get the grand final? Yeah, it's, it's actually been four prelim losses, man. Okay, now. <laughs> okay. okay. Probably not a good thing, but yeah, we're okay. Feel us in. How's how's that? Yeah, it's um, it is tough. 2013 was my first AFL playing year, and we were 21 points up at three quarter time against Hawthorne, and we lost the prelim, and that was the start of their dynasty of the three eight grand finals. I was young, and I didn't realise how how lucky, how what an opportunity it was, and how close we were to making a grand final and having success. And it's only started to hit me now. But, um, yeah, it is disappointing when you look back, especially last year, again, being up at halftime and losing to Richmond. You are so close. But I think that's why um, you hear people speak about winning premierships. It's so special and it's so hard to do because everything needs to go right for the whole of September, the month of finals. So, um, yeah, it's probably something that fuels me and, and... makes me work harder and, and want that success. Um, and, I, yeah, I would want that success for me and my teammates because I think um, the celebrations and the two weeks after would be something I'd never forget. Um, so, yeah, it's something that we're working towards and uh, I think this season is as even as it's ever been in terms of there could be 10 or 11, oh, any team probably at the moment could could step up and hit a rich vein of form uh, form and win it so um yeah we just have to wait and see I agree completely on that on a team that you're playing this week in the gold coast at three and one it's it's the most open season that's ever been and geelong's obviously two and two um just want to touch on this season it's obviously the weirdest of years and um what's happening at the moment there's still huge restrictions um we're just hearing at the moment about players visiting other players and how they could be suspensions. Run us through that. How how do you actually, what do you actually have to do in terms of COVID testing and, and compliance? Yeah, it's tough. We, every team has a compliance officer that pretty much uh, works through the technicalities and then gives us to the players in simple form of what we can and can't do and um, what we need to adhere by. And they're constantly changing and evolving and um, we just try and be as diligent as possible. But uh, we're, we're getting tests each week and this is, um, to obviously keep us safe and keep the public safe and uh, just allowing us to play. So, um, yeah, so far we can obviously 
work with teammates, we can see immediate family, which is a, which is uh, great for the guys and a bit of a relief because there's um, a lot of obviously the team want to see their family, so we're allowed to do that. Um, and then yeah, just pretty much keep it as is, and then from there we'll we'll head into a hub post St Kilda game next week and and go from there and and um, live life up there for at least three weeks in Perth. So um, which should be good, a bit of warm weather and. Uh, we'll get to play three games up there, but um, it's just a weird season. We've been told that from the start, as you'd know, but it's just just trying to roll with the punches and, and um, yeah, whatever comes up, just tackle it head on. So will you be able to leave the hotel in Perth? Will you be able to leisure activities and things like that? How How is that going to look? Yeah, I'm not too sure yet. Um, I'm actually not too sure on the details of where we're staying or what the protocols are. So I've uh, got some Snapchats from TK and Jermaine Jones, who's a uh, West Coast player, and they're up in Gold Coast, and they got um, outdoor, they're in the pools and almost looking like a resort style. Yep. So I'm not sure if we're similar in Perth or what it might be, but, um, yeah, again, we'll just have to wait and see. So let's move from there on to the post-season and say you love an overseas trip. I'm obviously in that same uh, mould there and we spent some time together in Vegas, uh, then to the World Series uh, in baseball, Boston. Um, touch on a couple of those trips and maybe what's next. Um, great memories, men's. I'm glad you brought this up. I've, I've put the special Tennessee volunteer stop on for it that we went to that game. So... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big traveller as you are. We, I just tend to try and get away in the off-season as much as I can um, just while we're lucky enough to get that time away, just explore and see the sights and um, big sports fans. So I try and uh, see as many live sport games as I can. Um, as you mentioned, we were lucky enough to uh, go see Boston and Orlando NBA game and uh, the World Series too. Uh, the trip's just great. The Halloweens we had. We had a Halloween party in New York. Um, yeah, just a ton of good memories, as you know. They're just good trips, good fun memories with good people. So I love it. And so your girlfriend, Georgia, loves, obviously, the States loves going on these trips as well. What, what, have we got anything lined up? Or are we sort of waiting to see him with, obviously, coronavirus at the moment? Yeah, well, we were actually, I was pretty close to booking Italy this year. Um, <laughs> probably a week away from booking and then I suppose all the shit hit the fan and yeah, uh, yeah Italy was ravaged with it too. So uh, put that on the back burner. So no trips yet, I, uh, purely for not knowing what's going to happen uh, with everything. So it might just be a little uh, around Australia trip, maybe New Zealand if it's open. Don't know. Definitely something. Like yeah. So another one which we both enjoy and love is our fantasy competitions. Um both obviously love sports and the fantasy that comes with it. You run the EPL uh, competition at Geelong, which no, I'm actually still in. It's, it's good that we've hung on a few of the boys and people who aren't in the club anymore. We're still involved in that. Uh, you've also taken over the NBA comp from me as well, which uh, I think that's just going to be nothing more this year, unfortunately. But um, touch on that. What's your strong point? What I'll give you a little pump up here. You are good at one of the competitions in particular. So what's your go-to? What's your favourite fantasy competition? Um, it was, well, um, I did the three-peat in the fantasy soccer, the EPL, and that was uh, my go-to. But since joining the NBA fantasy team league, uh, when you were running it, you'd won it two years in a row. And yep. then flipped up and I was an NBA fan, but I could take it or leave it. And since joining the fantasy NBA, I'm absolutely loving it. So... I'd say the NBA fantasy by a mile is, is my favourite. Um, pretty obsessed with it. And I was going pretty good this year until all this uh, all this happened. So, um, yeah, and it's number one. You might have been a real chance. I was. Well, I picked up Adebayo late. Yep. And I picked up Zach Levine late. And those two have had ripper seasons. So, um, that was good. But, yeah, we're, we're going to get a trophy made. And Dan Menzel's won the first two years. And it's going to have Nolan Boyd for the next one. So, <laughs> No, I think I agree with you that the NBA is the best because it's it's every single day, and so you, you're watching every game with a obviously an invested interest, regardless of whether it's Memphis playing Charlotte or whether it's the Lakers and Clippers. But um, is there anyone that you'd like to throw under the bus that struggles when it comes to the fantasy competition? There certainly was a few in the EPL comp, and even in our NBA comp when we ran it. 
Um, yes, I do. Um, <laughs> Kelly has been horrendous um, this year on it. Um, I don't mind if you're no good at fantasy. I just want to see you try, and I want to see you give a bit of banter in the group, and he's been a bit uh, MIA with that. Um, but apart from that, we've actually gone pretty well. We, I reckon we're a pretty competitive league. Everyone's stepped up. Tommy Atkins has had a few bad injuries. He went Steph Curry early, and that's knocked him for six. But um, mate, how's, how's Tom Hawkins gone in the league? Is he out of it this year? Um, he, I was versing him first week of playoffs. We were coming okay. into the second week of the first round of playoffs, and I was up by 30 points. I was probably going to get him, but he was a bit of a shout this week, uh, this year. He was good. Okay, that's good. And then, so another competition I want to move on to was one that I think you were actually never any good at because you, you went a little bit out there, and that's March Madness competition. What's your thoughts on March Madness? There is no March Madness this year, which for people who don't understand what that is, it's the NCAA basketball comp in America that is obviously in each March and April. But um, I don't think it was one of your strong points. Do you disagree? No, I completely agree. I was terrible at it. I would just go on the Bleacher Report and have a look and pretty much copy what they'd say and throw some wild guesses. But that's probably one of the hardest tournaments, I'd say, to actually do well in. Would you agree with that? I agree. We every time and that's why when you try and get people involved in it every time we did the competition the winner was someone who had no idea about basketball or the sport so it's um it's the hardest one to pick in the world and um not i'm not sure if you're aware but they offer a, a million or a billion dollars if you can pick the bracket correctly the whole thing no one ever gets close to it it's it's the most impossible thing ever to pick but it's um it's still some guys still fill out multiple brackets hoping that you never know one time if you can get lucky but it is, um, I agree, it's a tough comp. And, and so on other sports, who you obviously love a lot of sports, name your favourite sporting teams in the world. Sporting teams in the world. Rightio. I would, uh, initially, I was a Chelsea fan with soccer, but uh, since Lampard and Drogba and that era has sort of finished up, I'm on the Wolverhampton train at the moment. I think uh, I'm really enjoying what they're doing. Um, NBA. So just on yeah. that, as Reg and Hendo, I'm a Liverpool fan. They're obviously Liverpool fans. Have they they've been up and about the last few days since uh, Liverpool obviously won the title? Haven't they? Haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> Cops on every day reminding us. How are you going with it? You've been gloating, surely. Yeah, it's got that weird feel about it, though, because obviously what's happened and had to wait three months for them to actually win it. But, um, no, it's, it's. I guess every Liverpool fan was worried that they would not – finish the season and they'd go, no, it's just a cancelled season. It's a null and void season. There's no title awarded, even though there was no chance anyone was ever going to run them down. Um, speaking of that, though, Chelsea, I think, are going to be very good going forward with the with the selections, with the people they're bringing in. Yeah, yeah. They're um, hitting a bit of form. Yeah. Um, a nice little win over Man City, which got Liverpool the championship. But, um, yeah, look, I, I just, with soccer especially, a little bit NBA as well, I tend to follow my fantasy teams over actual teams. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, any other teams? Um, I'm really interested to see how Miami go this year in playoffs. Uh, yeah. again, I had Adebayo and uh, he was awesome, but I'd love to see them do well. Uh, I'd love to see Boston do well in the uh, playoffs. And I've actually I chatted to a few people and let them know I was going on this podcast today. I had one who remained anonymous. He wanted to get your thoughts on what he thoughts on Philadelphia and how they would go. The Eagles or the 76ers? Sorry, the 76ers. Uh, I think that, um, well, it's going to all depend on Joel Embiid, really, isn't it? Like, um, depends how much he's actually worked out in this break, which I don't reckon he would have as much as other players in the competition, just guessing at, at watching him. So... I think they'll struggle a bit. Um, I think Boston will be good, and I think Milwaukee will be good as well. So um, they're going to have a few issues, I think, because they're not if they don't win this year and and they keep struggling, or they're expected to win it. So if they don't do that, then um, I feel like they could easily break up Ben and Joel because of just fighting amongst the organisation. Yep. So yep. I, yeah, I would think that Milwaukee. Um, yeah, I just think Giannis is. He's going to learn that they play a half-court press on him, so he's going to work out ways around it. So I feel like they're going to be as strong as anyone. Um, and then who knows what's going to happen with the Lakers and with 
the Clippers. J.R. Smith just signed with the Lakers, so that would make it interesting. Um, but then the other one, which we touched on in our sports wrap before, is players are opting out of playing now. And so you don't actually know what players are going to be playing. Like DeAndre Jordan's out now because he's got coronavirus um, for the Brooklyn Nets. So there'll be certain teams that would just be weakened because of coronavirus and the players not wanting to play. Yeah, it's a good point you mentioned that. I would, um, I would think too, just with the AFL season at the moment being so even and um, results being up and down and uh, teams winning where you'd think they'd be losing or whatever it might be, I wonder if the NBA will follow suit and there'll be a lot of upsets and roller coasters and it's just the best team on the day wins it. Yeah, 100%. And, I mean, a, an interesting one will be Zion and the Pelicans because they got a really young team that are all fit and healthy now. So... They actually had an amazing record going into the break. So they could, oh, if, if there was ever going to be an upset, a, an eight seed win, that this is the year for it to happen. Yeah, might be exciting. Can't wait. It will be. It will be. So um, the last couple before we let you go. Um, so I wrote an article for the Geelong Advertiser a few years ago about what players would be best suited to what reality TV shows. And so... Had a bit of fun with it. Um, I guess my question for you is, with with Big Brother and a few other shows on at the moment, what would you like to go on? I, you'd you'd be um, you'd be well received on a number of reality TV shows. What what would be your go? I was actually having this um, chat the other day with a couple of my uh, schoolmates on the phone about how Big Brother's gone quite similar to Survivor at the moment. Apparently, yeah. I'm not much a Big Brother, but. Um, yeah, for me, it'd be Survivor and it would be The Amazing Race. I think those two would be fun, challenging, and um, I actually enjoy watching them myself. Um, they're the, probably the two I'd say. Yeah, I like that. I actually, um, in the article, do you remember what I had you down as? You probably don't. It was a few years ago now. Um, I It wasn't um, The Bachelor because no. I'm... <laughs> um, no, I forgot, mate. No, it was uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Because I know how much you love your quizzes and, um, yes, love your questions. So I had that one down for you. The Bachelor, I think I had um, Jake Collar Jasney for The Bachelor. Yeah, no, yeah. you got that one right. <laughs> well, uh, the other one I had with, the other one I had for you was potentially was The Block. Oh, yeah. Yep. I could see, I could see uh, Georgia on that and yourself on that as well. Yeah, we're actually renovating um, yes. the, my house at the moment to move back in. We're about to move back in in a month's time, which I'm very excited about. Uh, George has studied interior architecture, so she could definitely do well on the block. I don't mind the gardening side of things, but I would not have a clue on construction, so I reckon I'd let the team down there. Then. <laughs> so what we'll do is um, the last question we got for you, and we do this on every podcast. Uh, we have a top 10 in our third segment. And so uh, you know that I love my Sports Centre top 10, uh, and I brought a version into Geelong, which um, surely you'd be, uh, you'd be missing at the moment, wouldn't you? Mate, that was very well received. That was one of the best um, entertainment type segment segments we've had at the club. I thought it was um, creative, amazing, like funny, entertaining, but also you put in a lot of work to it. So I think the lads appreciated it. I'll um, I'll have to let Nida know that now that this is a media company that I'm in, they'd easily be able to produce something, and they definitely um, value that um, in some way. But what I'm going to do is our top 10 today is our top 10 must-go-to sporting venues in the world. And we've touched on it that you've been to some sporting events and some great venues as well. What would be up there for you? In, if you were writing your list, what would be a couple up there for you in the top 10 sporting venues in the world? Uh, I think not only the venue, but it needs to be the occasion. So I think for me, um, when we flew to Boston together, it was a spontaneous little trip. We did TD Gardens, the South... Boston Celtics home court against Orlando. Um, and then we did the World Series game one, Red Sox versus Dodgers at, at Fenway. And for me, those two were probably the ones that stick out the most in my mind, I'd say. Yeah, I like that. I think that um, we'll definitely, I think one of them will definitely get a mention in our top 10 um, because I agree with you. It's It's got to be a great stadium, but also it's the atmosphere and it's the experience that comes with it. And so that's a big one. So uh blitz thanks very much for joining us on the podcast um good to have a chat with you and um not i'll get you onto the 2k time trial and see if we can get you down around about the 
eight or nine minute mark for a 2K. See if you can beat Blitz's 3K time trial at eight minutes. And uh, thanks for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. Man's awesome, mate. Thanks for having me.